The Air Force Small Business Innovation Research Program has funded many critical and commercially successful technologies. This is the story of one of them. In the spring of 2015, the Air Force Research Lab in NASA successfully completed tests to realize a decades-long quest in aviation to seamlessly change the shape of aircraft wings in flight. This breakthrough technology will usher in a new era in aviation design. But it wouldn't have been possible without the vision, funding, and persistence of the Air Force Small Business Innovation Research Program. As you increase the strain... In 1994, Dr. Schreeder Koda was an associate professor of engineering at the University of Michigan. He was working on an idea, inspired by nature, called distributed compliance. Human engineering uses rigid materials and joints for strength. Nature is different. In designs in nature are strong, but they're flexible. And you can see them in trees and sharks and elephant trunks and millions of other examples. The idea of distributed compliance is to distribute the compliance, the flexibility of the material distributed throughout the structure so that no one part is overstressed. It occurred to Dr. Koda, by distributing the force deformation, it would be possible to create a seamless, morphing aircraft wing. This was the idea he brought to the AFRL. We saw it as an opportunity to be able to achieve the benefits of wing shape morphing and to be able to do it very efficiently. So I applied and I received the SBAR phase one contract in 1998. And the purpose of that was to demonstrate the feasibility. Dr. Koda was able to do a detailed design, uh, actually fabricate a compliant leading edge surface and test it in a low speed wind tunnel. So this is the prototype we built um, with the leading edge that can droop, change the camber all the way to 10 degrees. So that was the outcome of the phase one, where I not only demonstrated it can be done, and by looking at the calculations in the prototype, they can readily see that it can actually be scaled. In 2000, Dr. Koda was awarded a phase two SBIR contract with which he formed a company, Flexus. So in phase two, we were looking at specific applications. Uh, we looked at a leading edge uh, fighter structure, we looked at a trailing edge structure of a high altitude, long endurance vehicle, and we also looked at trailing edge structures for transport aircraft. And this is one of the uh, designs that we prototyped. Here is a shape adaptive trailing edge. As Flexus successfully completed one Air Force challenge, they were given another. We built this prototype to evaluate the structural feasibility of this design. By 2006, they had met every challenge and it was time to take the technology out of the shop and into the field. So we took our wind tunnel model and we attached it to the bottom of the White Knight aircraft and taking it to altitude in Mach number that was relevant to the application being studied. So you have this aircraft flying out of Mojave Desert at whatever, 110 degrees Fahrenheit and, and soaking all the heat and a few minutes later it's up at 55,000 feet and experiencing minus 40 degrees or minus 50 degrees temperature. So the, the temperature changes and how the material is going to react and how the actuator is going to react is something we wanted to test it out. And the other part was the aerodynamicists have known for a long time that if you have a one continuous surface, you can change the lift conditions without increasing the drag. While that was all theory, the flight test results have actually confirmed that we can change the lift uh, conditions with minimum or actually no drag penalty. So we successfully demonstrated the structure being actuated at relevant conditions, including Mach number, temperatures, due to changes in altitude and flight conditions. It was now time to take the final step, an SBIR Phase 3, which would entail incorporating the Flexus technology into an aircraft and flying it. So AFRL approached NASA with the idea of replacing the flaps on a Gulfstream 3 testbed uh, with a compliant trailing edge surface. So here it is, the final product. Uh, 20 years after my first visit to Air Force Research Labs, here it is ready for flight testing by NASA. The seamless compliant wing was attached and instrumented to the Gulfstream 3 at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in California. 22 rigorous tests were scheduled between November 2014 and April 2015. We evaluated the structure 
uh, to very large deflections consistent with takeoff and landing type conditions and to smaller deflections consistent with cruise trim applications as well as load alleviation and vehicle control. It passed all 22 tests with flying colors. None of this would have been possible without the Air Force's BAR contract. Um, they had the vision to recognize the value of this technology actually on day one when I first visited them in 1994. And they also um, supported us throughout and worked with us very closely in maturing this technology. So it's taken us 17 years from the beginning of phase one to the completion of phase three. What does this mean for aircraft of the future? It means we're gonna fundamentally change the way we design those aircraft. The Air Force is now applying the technology to a KC-135 under an agreement between Flexus and Boeing. When further commercialized, the Flexus technology will lead to billions of dollars in annual fuel savings, reduced manufacturing costs, and quieter, lighter aircraft. A breakthrough in aviation made possible by the Air Force Small Business Innovation Research Program. Learn more at www.afsbirstr.com.